Hey, if you're watching this video and this makes sense to you, I, ho I hope you are one of the minority people in the world. This will, the, the Venn diagram of these two things will cross. I feel like the Stormlight Archive is Kingdom Hearts if it was good. Yeah, I know I like Kingdom Hearts. I do. But heck, dude, it's so freaking up its own butt, it's insane. Words of radiance. Words of radiance. This is Words of Radiance. And this is The Way of Kings. Is this the sequel to my favorite book? Is it my new favorite book? Honestly, I can't tell you. As I've established before in the channel, once there's multiple books in a series, I have a hard time picking a favorite. But I read Words of Radiance in a storming week. So yeah, I've got thoughts about it. And yeah, it was captivating. I'm gonna start this video off with spoiler-free thoughts for the entire series. Then I'm gonna do a little bit where I talk about the book for people who have read The Way of Kings, but not Words of Radiance. And then I'm gonna finish off with some just buck wild spoiler thoughts on both of these books so far. So first off, for the completely spoiler-free section, for you who have not read The Way of Kings, what are my thoughts on Words of Radiance? Well, as I stated at the beginning of the video, I don't know whether this takes my new favorite slot or not, because it is a continuation, obviously, directly of the storyline established in The Way of Kings, which became my new favorite book of all time. I was a little bit afraid that much like a lot of people say about the Wheel of Time, that the books in the Stormlight Archive would be constantly adding characters and they might lose some of the characters that I love so much from the first book. Words of Radiance really doesn't do that so much. There are some new characters added in and some, some new scenarios for people, but for the most part, we're dealing with the same characters that you grew to love, or maybe not in The Way of Kings. Structurally, the story is still broken into some number of parts with interludes between each of those sections and those interludes are sometimes one-off characters sometimes characters we've seen before we get to explore different parts of the world and things that are happening in other places and the majority of the point of view storytelling is done from a lot of the same characters but instead of getting flashbacks from the same character as the first book, we get flashbacks from another one of the primary protagonists. There are a lot of people who seem to like Words of Radiance more than The Way of Kings, and if I were to take a guess, it's because a character that wasn't so fleshed out in The Way of Kings becomes such an integral part of the storytelling in Words of Radiance. And I think Sanderson uses Words of Radiance and the backdrop of, of understanding more about this character with a little bit of a darker flavor to explore some of the darker things that are available in his Stormlight Archive worlds. That's not to say that The Way of Kings was a cakewalk, but Words of Radiance is definitely murkier and darker in a lot of ways. And even though I think this section of the Stormlight Archive is actually gonna be five books eventually, this feels to me like the dark middle chapter. That being said, I, I don't know if that's for sure because I haven't read Oathbringer yet. But I will say that Words of Radiance was so good that it had me drop the rest of my TBR and start Oathbringer as soon as I could. Additionally, one of the huge things that Words of Radiance has going for it that The Way of Kings didn't necessarily, it kind of touched on, but it didn't fully dive into, Words of Radiance starts tackling the in-world version of a lot of the same controversial, or maybe they don't need to be that controversial, but they are, issues that we also see in modern day society. The position of women, classism, a form of racism in his world. These are all things that are addressed and we get to see multiple perspectives. Brandon Sanderson is absolutely incredible at putting you in the mind of characters that you may or may not agree with, but you can understand and empathize with the lines of thinking that get them to act the way they do, even when you disagree with them. From reading the Stormlight Archive, that is probably one of the craziest things that Brandon Sanderson does in a way that I don't necessarily see most authors doing as well. Yes, he does great action. Yes, he does amazing world building. Yes, he can sneak that world building in without you feeling like you're getting info dumped on. Yes, the story is cool. Yes, the characters are people that you can love or love to hate or just really hate because they suck, like on purpose. But the more subtle but equally as powerful aspect of Brandon Sanderson's talent in these books is his ability to put you in the brain of someone and make them feel like an individual person. You can spend time as a POV character, you don't have to see names and you know who you are and you understand via their background and their role in the societies or cultures that exist within this fictional world and you understand why they are the way they are. When there's character growth, it isn't flippant. It is hard earned character growth that feels genuine because you have to see the struggle of the characters. This feels like it should be elementary when I'm saying this, but I'm saying that Brandon Sanderson pulls it off in these books in a way that I don't feel like most authors are able to do. And that in combination 
with the fact that we're continuing the stories from the characters that I love so much from The Way of Kings and the world that I love so much from that world, and there's still so many mysteries left unanswered, leaves this series as my favorite series of all time still, and I just can't get enough of it. I'm obsessing over it, guys. I'm telling everybody I can to read The Way of Kings. If you see my comments on other people's videos, I'm telling them to do that because I want to talk about both The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance with everyone that I can. My brother is the only one that has kind of finished this book in close proximity to me, and we've been talking about it a lot and not enough. I'm thinking about potentially doing a video with him where we maybe talk about this series, maybe after we finish Oathbringer. Is that something you guys would be interested in? If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. What is your situation with the Stormlight Archive? Have you read any of it? Have you read all of it? What about the rest of the Cosmere? This is my first experience in the Cosmere. I want to catch up. After I finish these books, I'm going to go to one of those like chronological lists. I've had multiple people suggest them, including Christian from the Dark Portents and a friend I have in real life named Cody. Have you read any of the books in the Cosmere? Have you read these books? I want to hear from you down below. Does this sound interesting for you? If for some reason you haven't seen my Way of Kings video and you want to see my thoughts on the original book of that series, go see me gush about it over there. I loved it. Nevertheless, if you haven't read The Way of Kings, you wanted to see my thoughts on Words of Radiance to see if my thoughts that began with that first book continue into the second book and my high continues as the series goes on, that is true. Now I'm going to transition to talking about this book with spoilers from the first book. So if you have read The Way of Kings, but you have not read Words of Radiance, this section is for you. So Words of Radiance takes place shortly after the events of The Way of Kings. There have been major shifts in the lives of the primary protagonists, the, the primary people being Dalinar, Shallan, and Kaladin, namely Dalinar and Kaladin, based on the events that happened at the end of that first book. And since so much time was developing that first book, we actually don't have to spend a lot of time doing a ton of world building before we get right into the story of this one. So while in some ways, I still think the beginning of this book takes a little bit to get going, you're not learning everything from scratch. You're just kind of catching up with the characters in the short amount of time between the books. So if you loved The Way of Kings, what are the highlights? What are the reasons that you should be reading Words of Radiance? Number one, if you thought Shallan was underdeveloped and you didn't really understand her as much as you wish you did, or as much as maybe you understood Kaladin and Dalinar, this is the book for you because this book deep dives into Shallan's past. She's the flashback character for this book. And you also get a lot of super interesting modern day stuff for her. Now, if you remember, there was a lot of dark stuff that they kind of hinted at and teased about Shallan and her family. Well, you get to go and experience that. And for some people, that may be very rough because there is a lot of trauma that happened in, in that world. We can imagine that. This isn't really a spoiler because we know a lot of that through the hinting in the first book. It happened and you get to see it firsthand. But I think it really makes a complex character in a way that, yes, Kaladin is awesome and he is complex. Dalinar, I don't know as much about his super, super past, but he's also very complex in the future. This makes Shallan complicated and powerful in a completely different way than we ever fully understood. Additionally, her and Yasna's relationship from the first book was one of the most interesting things. Like as much as we didn't necessarily get to see a ton of who Shallan was or why she was that way in the first book, we loved seeing the interactions with Yasna and her and discovering all the things about the world. Well, there's more of that here. There's some really powerful stuff with Yasna, and that translates to some epic character development in Shallan as well. Without really giving too much away, the other aspect of the first book that maybe didn't get fleshed out as much as you wanted to, just for the story that was being told in that first book, but that you may not realize how bad you wanted it, or maybe you did. What's up with the Parshendi? This book, you get to get get some insight into the Parshendi culture in a way that is incredible, and that's a huge selling point of the book. Can't say more than that. But if you want to know more about the Parshendi, this is the book for you. That and all of the things that I mentioned in the previous section, the non-spoiler section at all. So yes, as someone that super loved this book, I would totally recommend it to people that love The Way of Kings. You should be reading it right now if you aren't already. And finally, I'm going to get to the part where I talk about the spoilers for this book. So this section of the video is only intended for people who have read The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. Goodbye, everyone else. Thank you for watching. I love you all. The spoilers section is going to start now. What the actual crap? The scene that sticks out most from me from the ending of this book is like one of the final scenes where Adolin comes across Sadius 
in the tunnels and just freaking murks the dude in the eye with a knife. Captain Price style? Is that, I don't remember who does that in that game. But dang, dude! You, yes, yes, Sadius had it coming. He's a very bad dude. He definitely deserved some actual justice. Literally thousands of people died at his hands in a betrayal. He's like Loghain from Dragon Age Origins. Freaking hate the dude. Yes, he deserved to die. But he just freaking straight cold-blooded murders him. Yes, it wasn't preempted, but it probably could have been handled better. We get to see that Adolin has a dark side. How is that going to translate into the next book? Like, is he gonna become darker because of this event? Is he going to regret it? Ultimately, it will probably help the kingdom in a lot of ways, but maybe not because they still don't have most of the high princes on their side. Of all of the things that go down in this book, moving forward this is the event that i think is the most insane which is saying a lot because dalinar bonds with the storm father at the end of this book what the heck my brother was like uh i forgot to mention this when we were talking about words of radiance in our previous text but is that one of the most awesome things that someone's ever done in fiction yeah probably dude's now like bonded with a a demigod some it's freaking crazy we still don't fully know what's going on with those visions but now they're in the magic radiant city so that's going to make for a lot of interesting times in the next book that and there's portals between the sections of world now i saw daniel green's thoughts on this book and he kind of complained that kaladin was a little bit like superman yes but superman is not as interesting as kaladin i've never seen superman as interesting as kaladin yeah he can technically fly now yeah he can heal Yes, maybe he's a little OP, but he's like not OP because his brain doesn't let him ever be happy. I'm really hoping that in the next book we can see a, a little bit more joy from Kaladin, except, you know, more joy than when he's just flying because that, that's not enough joy for my sweet boy Cal. But what about Shallan though, dude? Like, you, you, you got the impression that she killed her dad in the first book, but because of the misdirection, you kind of assumed, at least, I'm assuming this is what everyone was supposed to do, but this is what I did. I don't know. You assume that she stole the shard plate from her dad, who probably stole the shard plate from the oldest son. You see that in one of the early flashbacks. Uh, partially because you don't understand where the shard blades come from until late in this book. And also, will you find out that the shard blades just switch weapons at will? This turns way more awesome, like Devil May Cry, Bayonetta bullcrap that's sweet. Heck yeah, dude. That's so much... First of all, those swords were fly as heck. They're basically like keyblades. Hey, if you're watching this video and this makes sense to you, I, ho I hope you are one of the minority of people in the world. This will... The, the Venn diagram of these two things will cross. I feel like the Stormlight Archive is Kingdom Hearts if it was good. Yeah, I know. It. I like Kingdom Hearts. I do. But heck, dude, it's so freaking up its own butt. It's insane. So yeah, they've got a keyblade that can just change forms whenever they need it to. That whole fight where Kaladin fights Seth, Zeth, whatever his name is, is so freaking cool. Plus, you get to see Zeth be confused. And yeah, I want that boy to have a redemption arc. He had a really, really rough thing. I don't, I don't get his whole thing. I don't get the whole truthless thing. But I want him to be good at the end. I want him to get a redemption arc. He knew what he was doing, but he thought he had to. I don't get it. I don't understand it, but I want to know more. In one of the interludes for this book, we get to see Lyft and find out that she's also got powers or her awesome, as she calls it. I found out that she's one of the main characters in the stories later on. At least Brandon Sanderson has said that she's going to be if she's not already. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't have any problems with Lyft, but the tone is so different. She's so young and she her personality is so fun. It kind of just clashes with some of the other elements of this story for me personally. Her interlude was so long, I didn't particularly love it. And so maybe it was just breaking up the story that I wanted to hear that was, that was causing me the problems that I had with her. But I'm not sure how I feel about her moving forward. Oh, and heck, I'm going out of order now. I forgot to mention, Kaladin freaking broke his oaths and almost killed Syl. That was freaking tragic. And my brother texted me when we were talking and he's just like, Dude, when, when's freaking Spider-Man gonna find out Mary Jane loves him and get his powers back? Which is obviously a reference to the Spider-Man movie or comic. But yeah, dude, you freaking broke your oaths. You said you were gonna protect those who can't protect themselves. Who's more freaking defenseless than the stupid idiot king? But yeah, once again, you get one of those moments where Kaladin realizes what's right and does what's right and sticks up for the king. And then you feel bad because he had to turn his back on his rich brother. And I don't know how that's gonna turn out. Dude, he's working for that, that evil king, Tara Vonigan. I think that's what his name is. Tara Vangian, maybe, if you listen to the audiobook. 
What is up with that guy? He's kind of being built up as one of the main villains. Like, I feel like the main villains for the series are Odium and and his unknown evil armies. You had Sadius, but that's done. And Terra Vanji and Terra Vaughn again or whatever. He, I feel like, is the other big bad that we're going to have to deal with. But he is a weird character. I don't know how much I like the, like, trapping of he just wakes up every day with a different intelligence. One day he woke up and gave a super plan like Lex Luthor. And the next day he could be stupid. He doesn't know anything. And then he becomes king of two territories. He's like a freaking double king. Have it your way. And he's trying to unite the people in his own way, probably by just marking everyone else until he's the... I have no idea what his end game is, but it's insane. I don't know. I could go on forever from here. I, I don't want to make this video too long. But n the thing that I have to say is I was so obsessed with what was happening in this book and at the end of this book that I just threw out my TBR and decided I needed to read Oathbringer right away. I've been trying to space my series out. It made me break my covenant with myself. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to get to Oathbringer as soon as possible and then be able to get back to you guys with my thoughts on this series. And then I will have been caught up. I'll be ready for November and then I'll have to start dumping, dumping, jumping into the rest of the Cosmere so I can become a true Sanderson fan like everyone else. I love this series. I love the other books also, but I really love these books that I'm reading right now. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos of me fanboying out about Sanderson as I follow the Cosmere journey. I'm so excited to get to Oathbringer and then book four when that's brand new. I'm glad to be part of this whole fandom thing. Thank you guys for watching this video. I love you all. Have a great day. Goodbye. See, no one ever get enough. Always looking out tired sleep. No one ever get enough if I don't show up. I might get fired sleep. No one ever get enough. Always looking out tired sleep. No one ever get enough if I don't show up. I might get fired.